Salute to all the real ones out there. It's your boy Mike coming at you again with another video. And before I even get started, I just want to say uh, thank you to all the people who have subscribed to my channel, uh, gave comments, click like, and share the videos. Uh, it really helps me to grow my channel, and I just appreciate the support, you know. Uh, so with that being said, for all the new people who are visiting my uh, channel, and you like the direction that my that I'm going with it, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and also share the videos like other people, you know, um, you never know who this information might be helpful for, and hey, each one teach one, that's an old 5 percenter philosophy that I really truly believe, you know, you plant the seed of an idea, and it may grow in someone's brain at some later point in time, and to know that I'm contributing in a positive way is always, let's say, great reinforcement for what I'm doing here. All right, so um, today's topic is going to be about how to conquer fear. All right, so I'm going to hit y'all with a little bit of a more scripted type of video this time around because I came across a bunch of notes that I had since maybe last year, and I got really in depth with a lot of these things. And this time I'm kind of going to go by the numbers, reading along with what I wrote back then, and we're going to talk about some examples of how I had to face fear and what I did to overcome them, all right? And kind of like learning points that came from doing that. Now, it's understandable that fear is something that everyone has, you know? Everything is in this world, our emotions are based off of either fear or love, okay? So the idea is to try to get yourself more into a love-based thinking versus a fear-based thinking. Um, if we look at electromagnetic uh, waves, you'll see that love has a high, very fast frequency that's almost too much to contain. And then fear is a very slow moving wave, right? So can you imagine how you, it's easy to trap that in and control it? So hence why the media and the, the, the people who are in the super elite, they use fear-based media to keep everybody in a state of uh, of scarcity versus abundance you know you run to the store and you go buy all the stuff you can when you think it's going to be an apocalypse even though there's maybe not an apocalypse but your fear is making you think that there's not going to be enough for every everyone to survive that's a good example or uh, you know when someone stays in the same neighborhood their whole life and whenever there's an opportunity or a job that presents itself where the universe is saying hey here's your chance to go on another part of your life and learn more on your journey the person who thinks with fear will typically shun the idea and stay in their comfort zone you see what i mean also keep in mind in your comfort zone is going to be the least amount of growth outside of your comfort zone facing your fear is usually where you grow and develop new skills so Let's get started. We all have flaws, shortcomings, insecurities, problems, and doubts. At times, these things can hold us back from achieving success or taking the first steps needed to make progress. Fear is the monster to which all of the negative voices in our heads stem from. And though fear is so powerful that it may consume us and freeze our will to act, it is a necessary evil that can be utilized for personal gain. It's all about ch channeling that fear into a direction and charging ahead at full force. Earlier in my life, I had many fears that I eventually conquered, only to advance and come into contact with more formidable fears. Example one, I had a fear of public speaking uh, or being in front of a major crowd where all the attention was focused on me as I was talking about something. So I was presented with the opportunity to conquer that fear when I had to take a public speaking class, which was necessary in order to graduate. And what happened is I faced my fear, got up in front of the class, presented my topic, did pretty decent, had a good grade, overcame my fear and passed the class. But then think about it. The fear doesn't just go away just because I conquered that first initial step. It becomes more formidable. It's larger now. So I had to face the fear again, but this time, it was in a massive group that was literally four to five times bigger than my public speaking class from high school. And that was when I was the little platoon sergeant in basic training 
for the U.S. Army, where it's nine weeks long, but I was in the leadership position in front of my peers for seven weeks. And the success was when I managed to overcome that fear by just saying, fuck it, shaking it off and getting up there and doing my best to lead this group. And honestly, I shine so well that I wound up even getting promoted out of basic training. So you see, that would have never happened if I would have succumbed to my fears and maybe did everything I could to shun away the responsibility and go back to being in the crowd. I eventually got used to being up in the crowd and preferred it to being, let's say, a nameless face of 60 other soldiers. But then think about it. The fear just grew larger because fear is something that's usually, it's false evidence appearing real. So in your head, it's like, oh my God, I have to be in front of everybody. But it's false because really maybe the people who chose you to be up in front of everybody see something that you don't even notice about your own self. Maybe they see potential in you to be a leader, right? So now the fear has grown and the challenge that I have to face to overcome that fear is larger. So uh, this time I had the responsibility of speaking in front of five to 600 soldiers. And there were even prior service members who had been out of the army and then now were coming in or uh, they had a different job in the army and then they wanted to retrain to become a medic. So we had to go through uh, advanced individual training or AIT for all my military guys. Uh, and they nominated me as the student first sergeant. So that's basically the person who's in the very middle, middle who has to disseminate information from our drill sergeants to the entire uh, mass of soldiers. Now, my training to become a 68 Whiskey or a medic was uh, 19 weeks in Fort Sam Houston, uh, San Antonio, Texas. And I was the student first sergeant for 11 weeks. You see, so it went from me facing my fear, being seven weeks as in a leadership position with a smaller group, to now 11 weeks, four weeks longer with a group that's easy, <laughs> way bigger than that. You see, so it, it just keeps on multiplying. Uh, but what happened is I completed uh, the task and I learned new ways of coping. I got very good at uh, delegating responsibility. You see, a lot of people, when they're in a leadership position, they think that they have to do everything on their own. And they get overwhelmed by trying to, let's say, take care of all the responsibilities with just one brain. But if you know how to delegate responsibility, you can nominate people that you see potential in that can help you, that maybe like your leadership style, and then you get them to disseminate further information, and then they can maybe even continue the process on a smaller level. Hence, why you have, you know, you have uh, team leaders, then you have squad leaders, then you have uh, platoon sergeants, then you have the first sergeant, then you have the company commander, then you have, you, you see, and it keeps on going up until you get like to the major, you know, generals and officers. So, um, and think about it, my first example was with public speaking, but the other two examples I just named, it actually even came down to where I laugh at how far I got because I got to, I, I continued to find new challenges even to the point where at one time I was in front of a huge group of uh, uh, German security uh, workers and I was the security shift manager. So I had to go around to different uh, camps and speak to people in German and, and enforce things like standard, making sure that everyone wore a black shirt and black pants and came to work on time. And I was in charge of scheduling their vacation. I had to, uh, let's say, knock out any issues that were happening between workers who bumped heads and did not want to work in the same location. I had to see to it that those people were satisfied and could work away from each other, you see? All that was in a different language. Now, if I would have never faced my initial fear of public speaking, I would have never gotten to the point where I was comfortable to speak in another language and uh, lead an entire shift. So another example was uh, my fear of lifting weights. All right, so I joined the Army and I reached a plateau of performance with body weight exercises. You guys know push-ups, sit-ups, running, uh, combatives, and you're doing a lot of things that just involve like cardio and, um, yeah, body weight. 
So I was always intimidated by weights. And I know all you tall, slim guys maybe feel where I'm coming from. You come into a gym, you look around, everybody seems like they know what the hell they're doing. They got more muscles than you, they seem more confident, and they're able to put up way more weight. So for someone who's in the beginning stages, you may feel intimidated and uh, you don't want to look, let's say, weak or be embarrassed by not being able to handle a certain amount of weight and asking for help. So what I did to conquer that fear is I bought a book about bodybuilding to learn about the basic workouts and muscle groups, right? And this really helped me a lot because it was like drawn out, uh, not cartoon, but you know, uh, like an artist made each exercise where you could see the inner muscles of the human body. And it was explaining, you know, common mistakes that people make and how to work on your form and what, what muscles are being triggered with what, which exercise. And it will also have like tips on how to gain more strength or variations of a certain exercise. So I got very knowledgeable just about working out. Uh, then I started with light weights and focused on using perfect, perfect form. And what happened? I got stronger and I saw results. But, like I said, the fear always compounds because now I had to face my fear of the big exercises, bench press, deadlift, squat, and shoulder press, military press, right, with the barbell. I was always intimidated of the bar because I knew that's where you can put a lot of weight on. And I would see some guys, you know, they were able in high school to squat like 500 pounds, 600 pounds, playing for the football team. These guys were just beasts. And I was always just scared of putting up the bar. So I used to avoid those exercises, not wanting to look weak in front of others. And I, to conquer that fear, I just started very small, you know? Got used to those movements, perfected my form, and eventually gained confidence. And then over time, I slowly but surely started adding more weight. And now, those same exercises that I used to be very afraid of, I honestly prefer over the little small isolation movements where people are in the gym doing curls in this and that. It's like, dude, you're doing curls, but how much weight can you really curl? You know? It's going to be a small percentage of your body weight compared to how much you could deadlift. You know, if you deadlift and you're pulling up the entire bar, that's training your forearms, your back, you, you know, your butt, your legs. <laughs> your, even your uh, traps up here everything's getting much stronger it's even you know training muscles you didn't even realize you had so um, now I'm considerably stronger my body is closer to where I want it to be clothes fit better I look and feel better and conquered my fear of lifting weights by starting small and the, the fear is constantly revisited every time I go to the gym and try to move up to a heavier weight but by now I kind of have a I'm acclimated to that fear I'm used to it and I even use it as motivation, you see? Another example would be my fear of uh, swimming in the ocean uh, due to like sharks and marine animals. So, you know, you've seen the Hollywood movies, how they make it seem like sharks ain't got nothing better to do than to swim around viciously hunting after humans, but that's just a false perception. It's just, it's just bullshit, it's hogwash, man, it's hogwash. They make those movies, you know, knowing that they will sell. And I got to say, sharks are one of my favorite animals because they just look so fucking cool, man. They're just like, they're streamlined, precision, top-line predators. And, you know, not, not taking away from killer whales because killer whales literally eat sharks and are like double the size. But I'm just saying, sharks are just, just how they move through the water. It's like, man, what a beautiful creation, right? But what conquered my fear of wanting to get in the ocean and even being so crazy to be in Turkey with my wife and jump from a 40-foot bridge and do a backflip <laughs> or, or, or to jump right in the middle of the Mediterranean and have no issues was that I started reading statistics about the percent of shark and marine animal attacks. And you got to understand, listen, the percentage is so ridiculously low. For anybody who's scared of shark attacks, it's just like for anybody who's scared of flying in a plane, to put it in perspective, you should be terrified whenever you get on uh, around normal animals. You should be terrified when you see an alligator. You should be terrified when you see a loose dog. You should be terrified when you see mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are the most deadly animal on the planet. Literally, they take millions of humans' lives. No animal is fucking with mosquitoes. You can take all the animal attacks and combine it, and none of them are even close to mosquitoes. So you should be def definitely afraid of a mosquito. But you're not, right? You just smack it and get rid of it. And it's the same thing with a flight. You should be terrified when you get in a taxi instead. So 
I say that to say this, you know, we all have fears, but you have to do your best to try to look that fear dead in the face and conquer it, you know, because you don't want to live your life in, 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 in that fight or flight response whenever a certain topic comes up. You got to face it. You got a fear of heights. Book a bungee jumping trip. Go skydiving. Like, look, look fear, death, and anything that scares you directly in the face and find a way to laugh at it because you can laugh at yourself you know it's just false evidence appearing real so with that being said i hope you guys got something out of this video like comment subscribe you know share the videos as well and i'll holler at y'all back very soon with the next video take it easy